that we are going to say in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, before I share this message, there is a message that uh, uh, the, the Spirit of God has given me uh, in preparation, because I may not get time to come before people in a, no, in a normal service, in a normal service. Uh, and the, the re, one of the reasons why I cancelled the trip to Kwanda on Friday uh, is because on Friday we are starting our fast for families. From Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday, and then we will finish the fast on, on Monday evening. It will be four days. Yes. But for most people, you can do three days. You can do four days if you feel the grace to continue up to the fourth day. But it's a fast for families. So maybe the title of this preliminary message, because it's before the live stream, is update on the prayer and fasting for families. You can give it that title. You can type a new title. Update. I want to read from Ephesians. There are scriptures that I want to read in Ephesians. Uh, chapter 5, from verse 1 up to 6. And I'm also going to read from verse 22 up to verse uh, 30. It's not a sermon. You know, I'm not in a hurry to finish the 40 titles of Jesus Christ. We are flexible. Because I'm not hurrying like I'm going to die tomorrow. Even if I die tomorrow, or I die next week, someone, God will anoint someone to continue the message. So if God is prompting me to say something, I can say, ah, look, God, I'm still doing a series. Just hold on. You can't do that to God. If God prompts you to say something, you just have to say it by faith. So he gave me these scriptures to read, yeah, especially to, to us married people, but also to, to, to everyone in the body of Christ. Because the Holy Spirit was telling me that uh, there is a sin that the devil will try by all means to use this year to steal the divine acceleration from many Christians. From many Christians. There is a funny dream which has recurred three times that I've seen, which prompted, because I asked God when I saw this dream, I said, God, how can we deal with this kind of situation that I've been seeing? I was seeing people dancing as if in a night camp in the dream. Three times. They were dancing as if they are in a night lab. You know, I used to go to night lamps. So you can't say, how oh, could I tell that they were dancing in a night lab? I'm not like you who grew up in church. <laughs> I went to all of these places. So they were dancing in this dimly lit, very big room, like they are having a nice party. And then afterwards, some of them, they went to the lawns, and then there were other rooms. And these people, they were openly being intimate. I said, this dream, I, I tried to ca cast the dream. Not that I saw everything. You could tell from a distance. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. That these people are doing what is supposed to be done by married people in a private place. You could tell. And then 
in the dream, they were trying to move, to try to, to hide. I'll be moving to one corner. On one corner, I'm seeing exactly the same thing. Other people are doing exactly the same thing. I moved to another place, like there were, there were, there were several places with lawn, you know, lawn, grass, with lawn. Some are sleeping on the lawn. They are acting like they want to be intimate. I say, ah, but what kind of a situation is this? Why am I here? And then I woke up. In this other dream now, it was still the same setting, like it's a nightclub. People are dancing, but the speakers were outside, like it's a party. In a nightclub, the speakers will be inside, and people will be dancing inside their room. Some were dancing inside, some were dancing outside, because the sound was so loud in the dream. And then all of a sudden, people started fr frolicking. It, sta it started with people. I'm just watching, you know, because God wanted me to see these things. And I'm watching, I'm seeing a lot of people who are Christians. How did I know that they are Christians? Most of these people had a light, when they, which was covering their heads. You know, a light. This light was like, you know, in the morning when the sun is rising and there are particles of dust. You will be seeing the particles of dust flying in the light. So the light was like that, like there are particles of like gold dust surrounding the heads of not everyone. But I could tell that most of these people, maybe 80 or 90 percent of them are spiritual. And then I'm saying, but they are dancing to worldly music. And these people, they started to dance once, so they were just picking each other at random. And then I'm standing there at the corner. I'm wondering, why are these people doing this? And they are dancing secular music. I was waiting to say maybe I will hear gospel music. And then this thing is a concert. They are having a nice time. Some are drinking wine. Others are drinking these fruit juices. Others are drinking soft, soft drinks. They are partaking of soft drinks. I say, what kind of a thing is this? And then they start to dance once. The way they were dancing once, I had to run away. <laughs> Because <laughs> I had to say I can't watch this kind of worlds. And then as they were dancing, when I started to observe that the light around their heads was diminishing. Because they were picking each other at random as Christians, as these people with the, this glorious light on their heads. And then when they start dancing, the light was diminishing until they were now normal like the other people. When I'm saying they were now normal, it means they were super normal, you see. Until they were now normal. They were just ordinary. Let me say until they were now just ordinary. Instead of being extraordinary. I say, and then I was worried when I was just leaving that place. That how did I arrive here? And then when I'm walking to the gate, before I reach the gate, when I'm a bit far away from the gate, because it was a fairly large compound, compound. When I'm just about to reach the gate, I won't come. And then this morning, just before I woke up, because I woke up early morning, just before I woke up, I wake up, someone is like, is reading the news. He's saying, you know, at a night club, several Christians were arrested. They were doing things which are not dignified. It's like someone who is reading a radio, but it's as if someone is telling me, it's just that I'm sleeping, but the voice is like of someone who is reading news in a radio. That several Christians, they were warned that they are not supposed to do parties. They were found at a nightclub during a curfew, having a party, and they were doing a lot of things which are not dignified, breaking lockdown regulations, and then I woke up. So now, the Holy Spirit gave me this message that this year, the devil will use. You will try by all means to dispossess many of us Christians of the blessings that the angels have brought to this earth through sexual immorality. Through sexual immorality. If we can't do sexual immorality, 
you will try to have many Christians have illicit relationships as a consolation. <laughs> illicit relationships. Because I was asking God, why am I seeing this thing? It's disturbing me. Is it an attack which is coming on me? The Spirit of God says, no, 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 no. It's still related to the same message that I told you to go and speak, which you spoke, you see, at the beginning of the year, at the beginning of this month. I want you to go and speak some more because some they heard, but they did not hear. I feel the anointing. <laughs> Some they heard, but they did not hear. The voice of fornication or the voice of sexual immorality was stronger than your voice. Fornication has got a voice. It has got a voice. And it is the voice which is commanding many marriages to crumble. or adult, for married people. But we can generally call it fornication. It's just one and the same thing. So, God was telling me, the angels have brought a lot of blessings to you. You don't need to pray many prayers. The greatest prayer that you can pray this year is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Moral purity. Because the heart cannot be pure when we are sexually immoral. I, I can't say my heart is pure by grace when I'm sexually immoral. <laughs> I can't claim grace to hide from you. When you are sexually immoral, you start to disappear from prayer meetings. It's a, it's a, it's a very serious demonic strategy. And uh, it's one of the reasons why our, our prayers as Christians, sometimes they delay. And we go around looking for endless deliverance. If we can sort out that one area, it will solve a lot of problems. For pastors, among pastors, because sometimes as pastors we are found wanting in that area. And we hinder the healing of the people of God as pastors. So I'm speaking to my brothers and sisters who are church leaders. That this year, this is one area that we must look out. I'm not saying in other years, then in 2023 we can freely fornicate or commit a talent. <laughs> but I'm saying this year, it's something, it seems it has been arranged in the satanic kingdom to make many people who are doing the work of God to fall into sexual scandals. So, I spoke last time, but God was saying, ah, last time you spoke, but you were too brief. Because God, God has his own opinion on, on how things should be done. <laughs> God said, Ian, what will you? But trust to go up and feature and do them feature. Because Uncle Uncle is always seeing I'm my angels that are taller than me. You see, I think I'm, I, I think I'm tall in the absence of the Sudanese and the people from Ukraine and the Russians in general. But then God said, Ah, what could you do, Mam But what's the problem with the You spoke, but you were too brief. You were too brief. That's an area where most of you have got a cancer including you, whom I call my servants, you have got a cancer in that area. Both the married and the unmarried, you have got a very serious cancer of sexual morality. These are the words that God was telling me. It's not even easy for me to speak them. But I have to speak what God has commanded me to speak. You think it's easy? 
it's easier for me to tell you that this year, any pastor who is building a church, you are going to finish it. Any person who wants to marry, you are going to marry. But then God will say, but you are sexually immoral, how will you marry? You are sexually immoral, you are always looking around, flirting with women when I hear them. You are always flirting with women, how will the ministry grow? I'm just giving myself as an example. I can't give another person as an example. These are the things that God speaks. And if you are a pastor, you know that. You know what I'm talking about. So then God said, go and tell them that if they can sort out that cancer, they will see my power as of old. They will see my power as of what? Yes. Power which was manifested by people like Moses, Elijah, Stephen, even the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Do you know why Jesus Christ manifested so much anointing? Do you know why? I know some people, they say he was, uh, he was prayerful. He was filled with the Holy Spirit without measure. There are so many reasons in theology books. No, Jesus Christ was morally pure. There is nothing which hindered the flow of the anointing. He said to himself that the prince of this world is, is coming. He has nothing in me. Anachunu. Anachunu. I feel the anointing when I speak it in Shona. The devil is not a shareholder in me. The reason why people like King Hezekiah, they could go to the wall and say, God, I heard that I'm just about to die, but I can't accept death. I've walked before you upright. I've never cheated on my queen. That prayer of King Ezekiah, I don't know how many of us pastors can really pray that prayer. If a, a powerful man of God or a powerful boy of God were to come and tell us in love, sort out your house in order, put your house in order, or so and so, whatever your surname is, you can plug in your surname, put your house in order, you are just about to depart from the earth. Or we will be praying and repenting so that we enter the new Jerusalem. But King Ezekiah said to God, I've walked before you upright. He said, I've walked before you what? Upright. King Ezekiah. He said, I've walked before you what? Upright. Ezekiel chapter 38. No, Isaiah chapter 38, I mean to say. Verse 1 and verse 2. In those days, Ezekiel was sick and near death. You know, upright people, they can be sick and near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order. For you shall die and not live. For you shall die and not want live. Then Ezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Ezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Akuna ma chapters in between. Saying, go and tell Ezekiah, that says the Lord, the court of David, your father, have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. 
and I will defend the seed. I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. The classes. So when I saw those three dreams or visions, I remembered the prayer of Hezekiah, and I was asking God and saying, God, you created the whole universe. I was praying in my heart, not audibly. I'm asking that you give us grace once more to be like this man. So that we walk before you and humanity uprightly. And so that <clears throat> we can speak like Jesus Christ. In John chapter 14. In John chapter 14. Verse 29. And now I've told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. He has nothing in who? 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 NIV. I told you now, I've told you now before it happens. So that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. And Nachun. It doesn't have a fifth column. He has no hold over me. He has no hold. Anachun. In the wilderness, He has no hold over me. Anachun. <laughs> he has no hold over who? Over me. He said, I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. Indeed, he was coming with soldiers and other people. A Ketzerman. Jesus Christ said, even though he is coming, he knows he's just coming empty-handed. He has no hold over who? Over me. Anachun. He has got no hold over who? Over me. So the Holy Spirit was asking, does the devil have any hold over you in a certain area? He was asking me. And he said, I must share the same question with you. The Holy Spirit was asking me, me, no Ian. I would say it in my language. He was asking me, me, no Ian, does the devil have any hold over you, Ian? Your answer to this question will determine whether you will accelerate with divine acceleration or you will remain last year or even regress to 10 years and go. And you don't answer this question by word of mouth. You, we answer this question by our conduct. That's how we answer the question. I'm not condemning anyone. I'm just showing you a very simple formula where you will avoid a lot of fasting for things that you shouldn't be fasting for, like money, like a marriage. Those who are fasting for marriage, you don't need to be fasting for those things. When you sort out your conduct before court, you walk upright. You have got a right as a sister to go to the wall in your house to say, court, I've not fornicated with anyone in the last five years. And I'm not flirting with anyone. I'm believing you for marriage. 
You see whether within a few days or months, God will not give you a marriage. God does not run out of potential husbands to marry. He doesn't. You know, God, I don't know whether Sarah, I mean, Rebecca was prayerful, but God engineered a, a, a group of people with a lot of things, with Lobola to go and seek a wife whom they did not know and to pay Lobola instantly the, the dowry or the bride price for a woman whose character they did not know to a man who did not know that woman. That's how God can operate. For a woman, just imagine if they arrived, if they had found Rebecca pregnant. Pregnant. They were going to say, ah, don't you have other relatives? Don't you have other relatives? Where we were sent as a pump with it. Because they had no cell phones. <laughs> they found it without any, any child in the stomach. She was waiting for that divine appointment. She didn't while away time with anyone when she was waiting for the divine appointment. She was like King Ezekiah. She was waiting for the timing of God and the abilities of God. And then, let me summarize. It's an uncomfortable message. But God said, before you say about the titles, even if you say one for me, it will be okay. That's God speaking. You still have a lot of time to share about the titles. You can even share them when you are seated on your chair. But I want you to go and tell my children that you, leaders, and the people whom you are leading, I expect you to be sexually upright. When you do that, the prayers and the fastings that you, you, you have been doing, I will remove them. And then I will give you what, I ought, what you were supposed to be given in the first place. I'm not saying sexual immorality is the only sin, but that's the sin which God pointed out. I don't know whether it's the favorite sin of Christians or there's another favorite sin I don't know. I don't have statistics. Let us read Ephesians. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater is any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. This is the message that God has sent me to speak. Because I won't interpret these verses. The Holy Spirit promised me that when I read them, he will interpret them. I will read them two more times. I will do what I've been told to read this, uh, this passage three times and the other passage three times. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice 
to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be even not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor cost cost jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicate unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolat has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Last time. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be even, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish just talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. And then in Ephesians chapter, you read up to chapter, uh, up to verse 33 on your own. I'll just read a few verses. Pertaining to us who are married. I'm going to read up to verse 27. From 22 up to 27. You can read the rest on your own. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Two more times. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. One more time, the last time. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, Love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So this is the word of God. First of all, to all of us as Christians and then to those of us who are married. So if you are a husband, the challenge that we have with the husbands 
is that uh, they've mastered what, uh, what Paul was saying to the wives. Instead of mastering their own. That's the challenge which we have in the port of Christ. There are so many men, including as pastors, who will be forcing their wives to submit. Yet they are not doing their own. We are not doing our own. As a pastor, do you really love your wife? If you love your wife, why is your wife wearing a ring and you are not wearing anything? Right now, so kuchwa ma ring like a keep If rings are being removed, then the, just allow your wife to remove the ring, isn't it? You are no longer wearing rings. Why do you uh, torment her when you don't see her wearing a ring and you are not wearing a ring? I know some people they will start to say rings are from the devil. No, that. That US dollar which you like so much has got a lot of satanic symbols. Just to shut up. If I give you 100 US dollars, which is one dollar notes, they'll be having the all seeing eye of Osiris or Osiris. It's there on top of the pyramid. There's a, on top of the pyramid, there's a smaller triangular prism or a smaller pyramid, which is cut from the rest of the pyramid. It is an eye, the all-seeing eye of a pack and court Osiris. We, people keep that man under lock and key. The same people say we must throw away our rings. They don't see any contradiction in them keeping the man with the, with the, with the all-seeing eye of Osiris. So that's the challenge that we have even among pastors. As pastors, we are very quick to master that wives should submit to their husbands. But Paul was not speaking to husbands. Then. He was speaking to wives. If you are a wife as a husband, then master what Paul was saying to your wife. And concentrate on that. But if Paul was speaking to your wife, just let Paul speak to your wife. Just do what Paul said to you. If it doesn't work, then Paul will be busy doing his work with the Holy Spirit on your wife. That's the challenge that we have. And then for the sisters, they will be telling the brother without submission, that the Bible says, you must love me. You have never bought me some roses and other things. There are these modern expressions of love. <clears throat> so it means you don't love me. How can I submit to you? Either of us in marriage, men or women, we just must just master our own. We concentrate on our own lane. We will discover that as Christians, the, this thing called marriage, which God himself initiated, it will work. It's a shame for us as Christians to be divorcing faster than the people in the world. It's a shame, according to God. I know many people will be angry with me. I'm not going to divorce. Because some people, they will say, you say that. <laughs> What if you divorce? I fell and beg um pa go divorce. I caught the eighth divorce. I when I say I'm beg um pa go divorce, um pa go call to um takura in shona. When you are embarking on a journey in our part of the world, you carry some food which you will eat along the way. The food which you will eat along the way is called um pa go. So some of us pastors we avoid say, saying certain things. To, to, to have an insurance policy that if such a thing may happen to me, then I don't want to be found wanting people asking me to swallow my words. People would rather force you to swallow your words. At least you are trying to be morally perfect before God. Rather than God tells you to say something, you are not able to say it because secretly you are planning to divorce. Because if you are afraid of saying some of these things, because 
you worry what would happen if your marriage were, would collapse. But God is there who hates divorce. He will prevent it from collapsing. Why are you afraid? You must just say it. You must don't worry about things which are beyond your power. Whether you will keep that man or you will keep that woman with you. Whether they will not leave the woman or the man will not leave you. And then people laugh at you for having preached the heart messages. And now the thing has caught up with you. You shouldn't worry. You leave that to, to God and to concentrate on your lane. So the Spirit of God was telling me that this year, for married people, God expects them to love one another and also to submit to one another. True biblical love has got a greater component of submission than just ordinary submission. We see it in Christ. Christ was serving food to his apostles and he washed their feet. Someone will say, ah, but he was doing that on the last sub in order to teach his disciples humility. But he also prepared breakfast for them after his resurrection. Mm. When read John chapter 21. I just imagine you after resurrection with the way you are a papa with the, all, that, all of that mighty protocol before, before you are even glorified. Just imagine when you are glorified the kind of protocol that you will be needing to prepare breakfast for you. Jesus Christ had no protocol. There were no angels that were walking with him to the Sea of Tiberias where the apostles were. Had, they had returned to make matters worse, they had abandoned the mandate that he had given them to preach the gospel. They were now fishing. Peter had returned with the others to their former profession of catching fish. But when Jesus returned, he organized the fire. I don't know whether he was carrying matches or he just produced the fire supernatural. The Bible does not explain that to us. They found Jesus Christ having already caught some fish. And then having half prepared the breakfast, they brought the other fish and they ate. After they finished the breakfast, then Jesus mandated Pete. Before and after resurrection, Jesus Christ was the same Jesus who was after servant leadership, who was after service. His love was not demonstrated by flowers. I don't even know of any apostle that he brought a flower to to show that he loved them. It was shown by service. True Christian love is shown by service. If giving flowers is a form of service in a modern society and it doesn't violate any of the commandments of God and we can afford them, do that. But even go beyond that. True biblical love is demonstrated by what? By service. By commitment and by sacrifice. This is what is covered in those verses that I read. By service, by commitment, and by sacrifice. It's only a demon, a seriously demon-possessed woman who can leave her husband, who demonstrates their love through service, commitment, and sacrifice. Because the woman will start to think, this man, but this man is very sacrificial. This man is committed to me. I've never seen anything. His phone, he can leave it at home and tell me to answer any messages, even messages of sisters who would be calling him. And I, I, I answer the, them. They will be addressing me as either their sister or their mother. They respect me. He's very transparent to me. He demonstrates a high level of commitment to me as a person. Yes, we have got differences here and there. But this man is a, he is a man of service, like Jesus Christ. He is a committed man. He doesn't cheat on me. I am confident that even if he's among women, he won't do anything wrong with them. 
and is very sacrificial. If a woman is thinking of abandoning that marriage, even if she's demon possessed, she will have to fight the demon. She will go all over the place for deliverance <laughs> to keep her marriage. <laughs> Because she will be sensing when the demon is not active that something is wrong here. Why am I leaving this man when the evil spirit is not there? Whether it's a spiritual husband or a giant spirit, these things that we sometimes see on some of these channels speaking, saying, I'm a giant. I'm a giant. She will finally be delivered in one of these strong living churches. The living churches. <laughs> And you will be able to enjoy your partner now. <laughs> you think I don't know the language of deliverance ministry? One of these days when I conduct deliverance, I will use it that now this is the real wife that you married. This is the real husband that you married. This thing that you are suffering from is an affliction. Don't use it against him. Don't use it against her. <laughs> so, what we are simply saying is that the pattern is on us husbands. Personally, I've got this personal belief that many marriages which collapse. I'm a man, I'm not a woman. I don't know how women reason, and I'll never be a woman. A woman in all of eternity, I will never be a woman. So you can forgive me if I'm wrong. I will never be a woman. I don't wish to be a woman. I was never a woman. I won't be a woman. I don't want to be a woman. So I will reason from my perspective as a man. From, I've got a belief that most marriages that collapse as a man. If a man could do one or two things, the marriage would survive. I've got a personal belief along those lines. I know I may be wrong, but I've got this personal belief. There are some marriages which collapse when a man is trying all things. That's the exception to the statement that I'm speaking. But many marriages that collapse, the woman will be seeing that she's neglected. The woman abandoned her relatives, she abandoned her surname, assumed your surname, and some women even changed documents. When they already have degree certificates, master's degree certificates, the woman goes and changes her IDs and their passports. You think if you are neglecting her, she won't show bitterness and resentment. Her documents have changed. She has sacrificed a lot. It's only sensible for you as a man to also sacrifice a bit. When there is a bit of that sacrifice, I believe the woman would stay. Because she would ask herself, should I gamble when I'm now with children or even without children, when I'm known that I was married to so and so? Should I gamble with someone whose character I may not know? As they say, better the devil that you know than the one that you do not know. So she will reason that this one is not even a devil, it's just a human being who is imperfect. But the Bible says, ah, sexual immorality, fornication, all uncleanliness and covetousness, those things, we should not be even talking about them in the body of Christ. I know the message has become a sermon, but God said, last time you were brief, go and speak about these things. Because last time you were what? You were brief. Why are you brief? Some people would think I'm actually short in the natural. I would be shocked when you visit our church that I'm more than three or four inches taller than you. But in the realms of the spirit, I'm still short. I'm still growing in the things of the spirit, in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we are fasting, we must know that God is calling us to sexual morality. He's calling us to sexual purity. If you have got no intention, 
of, sex, of being sexually pure or sexually moral, not immoral, sexually moral, without the I am at the beginning. Then don't engage in this fast. Because you will be hurting your body. God will not listen to the people. God sees our hearts. He knows those who are keeping mtakura, who are keeping food for the journey in their hearts. Utanga mpota kupena ndavanga nbamla vane singa ntua sisa na kakulu ku Facebook. Wangu three. I've got those three friends on Instagram. Uka vela ka yense nga ntua senchi ya nyamiege lanchi. <laughs> when he or she acts like he wants or she wants to leave me I'll just let her go because I've got those three close parties I'll just choose among them he doesn't know that wherever I go I'm proposed even when I'm working with these children that they propose to me don't you see that the thing is not genuine it's a temptation it's a temptation. Go out of that marriage and see what will happen. All of a sudden, you are now single. There's no one who is checking your phone. You are now free to find now those women who appeared like marriage material. They will start to doubt you and they will keep their distance to say, ah, this man, who can abandon such a nice woman? Because women always have an opinion about your wife. Or your husband. You see, they may not know everything. If you are a man, they have an opinion about your wife. If you are a, a lady, they've got an opinion about your husband. And in most cases, you can't have many people who know you having the same opinion and it is wrong. People know things about us. They know a lot of things about us. Yes. So, it's a call. We need divine acceleration. But God says, He also needs His divine acceleration in our current. He says, if we can give Him human acceleration, it's divine acceleration. He says, if we can give Him human acceleration in our current, through His divine power, he will give us divine acceleration in all areas of our lives. He just needs a bit of acceleration in our current. He says, if we can accelerate in these things that we are touching on this afternoon, he will also accelerate the manifestation of the blessing. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying this afternoon. That if we can accelerate our conduct, when, when our spouse is, when Mrs. Sintloff is not looking, when I'm alone, where I'm working, I, when someone is trying to darling or DM me or whatever, I say, ah, no, I'm married. That, that woman will skin you alive. <laughs> I don't even need to show her the message. She will just skin you alive <laughs> without a knife. She will just skin you alive. You will remain without a skin. <laughs> when we do that, more often, there will be many blessings that will... Uh, the Spirit of God said, ah, no. When it comes to lying and the envy and all of that, ah, I see those things. But where you are measuring is the misuse of your bodies. You misuse your, your organs. You misuse your eyes. And under extreme conditions, you misuse the organs that I created for, for procreation and for use in marriage. You misuse them. You are immoral. I just want you to accelerate in those areas. When you accelerate in those areas, you won't need to remind me to accelerate the blessing to you, especially material things. You won't need to ask for money, to ask for houses, to ask for cars, to ask for clothes. I know that you need those things. It's just that there are these cancers that you are tolerating. These moral cancers that you have been tolerating for many years. The time for that is past. The summer is past.
the message that I was given by court has ended. I was not judging anyone. I was just, I'm just a messenger. I was passing a message from the owner of the church. Yes. So in five minutes, I will just cover the title. Uh, mediate. In five minutes or less, the title will meet yet. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Hebrews 9, verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So Jesus Christ is the mediator of the what? Of the new covenant. I want us to confess and say Jesus Christ is the mediator of the new covenant. Hallelujah. The last scripture that I want to read in this message. The way God does things, he doesn't do things the way we want. He does things the way he wants. Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Who is he who condemns? Because people, with, they are saying, they will say, ah, now we are speaking. You should not condemn yourself. No, I was not condemned. I was passing a message. If you have the spirit of God, you can go to your prayer closet and ask God, did he any hear from God? What will answer you? Just ask with the sincerity of heart whether I was sharing my own ideas or I had hurt God. I say to God, but I, I told them, why should, why should I repeat this? And then the Holy Spirit, because you can feel supernatural when you are in the Spirit. That quote is almost laughing at you. <laughs> you can feel it in your inner man if you are a person of the Holy Spirit. That quote is almost laughing because God talks to our hearts. And God was talking to my heart. He said, Dotem Fichan, You were brief. You are saying that symbolic gun. That where I want you to belong, you are usually short. He was not referring to the shortness of my stature in the natural. Because I'm taller than most people. He was telling me that where I want you to belong, you are short. And where I want you to be short, you are long. Just be what I want whenever I send you. <laughs> So if God tells you to go and warn people that they are going to die and then to tell them that God loves them, to warn them for 40 days that they will die and to tell them that God loves them for two minutes and then you spend 40 days telling people that God loves them and then you take two minutes to tell people that they are going to die, you have not said anything. You didn't convey the message of God because the way it was conveyed was wrong. Those who are of the Spirit, they know what I'm talking about. Thirty-four. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Because Jesus Christ is our mediator. He is always interceding for us. Now, the question which I sometimes have is that, and you will have to forgive me, it's not that I doubt that Jesus Christ is interceding for us. But sometimes I will be asking because of our circumstances as Christians. 
in most cases, you see Christians, they are at the back of the class in school, or they are just average. In industry, there are employees who are being sent by non-believers. In politics, they are rigged by people who worship idols, who worship dead entities. When will we rise to the top? The Bible says we are the head and not the tail. And then, one of these days, I was just asking myself, if Christ is really our intercessor, where are his prayers going to? It didn't say Paul is our intercessor. It says Christ, someone who was dead, who is alive forever, more according to Revelation 1, is our intercessor. What's happening to his prayers? We go back to the message that I shared. We abide in the word of God. We abide in the word of God. And the word of God abides in us. And the word of God abides in we, produce we produce good fruits. For the kingdom of God. For the, kingdom of God. The, love of God the, the love of God the Father. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with us. Be with us. Now and forever. Now in Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, we are done. I release every mighty blessing.